Hello, pupils. You're welcome to another wonderful edition of your favorite program, The Classroom in Your Home. A program organized by Lagos State Government and packaged by the Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board, La Subeb. It is to ensure that you're academically engaged in addition to what you're learning in school. I am Antifumi, your English studies teacher. As usual, I am not here alone. I have with me your wonderful teachers. Hello, children. I am your mathematics teacher, Uncle Agbaje, but you know me as the, the mathematician. mathematician. Uncle Popo is here, your general studies teacher. And we also have our hard-working sign language interpreter. Together, we, we are, are bringing, bringing the, the classroom, classroom into, into your home. home. Please stay tuned. You are welcome to Antifumi's class. In our English studies lesson today, we will be continuing with punctuations. Yes, punctuations. But before we go into the learning objective for today's specific lesson, let's have the correction to your homework. You were given the sentences that you should punctuate correctly. So, here is the correction. Every sentence starts with a capital letter. We have established that. that. So, did you get everything correctly? Are you sure? You're awesome, and I celebrate you with a cheer. Good job, you. Now to the learning objective for today's lesson. I told you we'll be continuing with the lesson on punctuations. So, by the end of today's lesson, you should be able to use capitalization correctly in sentences. You should be able to use capitalization correctly in sentences. Not only that, you should be able to identify colon and quotation marks and use them correctly in sentences. That is to tell you that today we're going to look at colon, quotation marks, and capitalization. So, on that note I say, Let's begin the lesson. Of course, we are on punctuation mark. And we're starting with capitalization. Capitalization is a very important aspect of punctuation. Capitalization is a very important aspect of punctuation. The first word of every sentence, I said that before now, the first word of every sentence must begin with a capital letter. The first word of every sentence must begin with what? With a capital letter. Brilliant, brilliant you. For example, the policeman caught the thief. The policeman caught the thief. We have the starting, start beginning with a capital letter T. The policeman caught the thief, starting with a capital letter. Our children are learning. Our children are learning. Our begins with a capital letter O. Are we together? Still on capitalization, we use it to begin every word in a proper noun. We use capital, capitalization to begin every word in a proper noun. Even if it is in the middle of a sentence, the moment it is a proper noun, we must use capitalization. For example, the car belongs to Dio's father. Dio is the proper noun here. And definitely you cannot write small letter D. It must begin with a capital letter. That's why we have capital letter D for Dio. The car belongs to Dio's father. Don't forget to begin every word in a proper noun. We must use capital letter. The children attend Maryland Primary School. Capital letter M, capital letter P, and capital letter S. Because Maryland Primary School is a proper noun. 
The Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board caters for the education needs of all children. The Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board caters for the education needs of all children. That is, children on the basic education. So, Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board is a proper now. Irrespective of the fact that it occurs in the middle of the sentence, it must be capitalized. It must be capitalized. Every word there must be capitalized. Are we together? Smart children. We also use capitalization for abbreviations and acronyms. We use capitalization for abbreviations and acronyms. For example, WHO. WHO is the body responsible for global health. WHO. If you can see, you see that it, they are not written in lower cases or in small letters. It, they are capitalized to show that it is an acronym. Here, WHO means World Health Organization. And you can see that the acronym is boldly written in capital letters. Are we together? The NLC fights for the rights of workers in the country. Another acronym is NLC, written in capital letters. And NLC means what? Uncle Popo has taught you that. What does it mean? It means Nigeria Labor Congress. So, capitalization is used for abbreviations and acronyms. Now, let's look at another punctuation mark. That is the colon. The colon. We use colon to introduce a list. When you want to introduce a list, you use the colon. For example, we want to distribute the following food items. Then you have the colon. The colon is like two full stops placed on each other. We want to distribute the following items because you want to list the items now. You have a colon. Then you start mentioning what you want to distribute. You want to distribute rice, beans, yam, spaghetti, pando yam, and salt. The names of pupils selected for the scholarship are as follows. Because you want to list the names of those pupils, you have a colon. You have what? Colon. So... The names of people selected for the scholarship are as follows. Bolu, John, Rachel, and Atinuke. So you use colon to introduce a list. Not only that, you use the colon when you want to, uh, when you're talking about some phrases, some specific phrases. The following phrases are usually followed by a colon. For example, you have colon. In other words, to sum up, the following, or as follows, you use colon for those phrases. Are we together? Now, let's look at the third punctuation mark. That is the quotation marks. The quotation marks. This is the, the sign or the mark. The sign for the quotation marks. You have like two commas written up facing one another. Those are quotation marks. Quotation marks are also called inverted comma or speech marks. I may decide not to say quotation marks. I may say speech marks or inverted commas. Oh, somebody is saying inverted comma begin and close. Okay, something like that. But then quotation marks we are also called inverted commas or speech marks. They are used in a direct speech. We use quotation marks in direct speeches or in a direct speech. That is when the actual words of the speaker are repeated without any alteration. You want to say it just the way, exactly the way the speaker said it, 
without any alteration, then you use quotation marks. Here's an example. The examination will start tomorrow, said the teacher. You didn't want to alter it. You want to say it exactly the way the teacher said it. Then you have the quotation mark beginning the exact word of that person. The examination will start tomorrow. You end the quote, then said the teacher. So we use the quotation mark in a direct speech when the actual word of the speaker are repeated without any alteration. Quotation marks are used for titles of books. We also use quotation marks for titles of books, plays, films, poems, newspapers, magazines, songs, festivals, and programs on radio or television. All this, we use the quotation marks for them. Titles of books, plays, titles of plays, titles of films, titles of poems, newspapers, magazines, songs, festivals, and programs on radio or television. For example, look at the sentence. I have read Chinua Achebe's, the title of Chinua Achebe's work now, book now. I have read Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart. Quotation mark here and quotation mark and the quote is handed here because you're talking about the title of Chinua Achebe's book, Things Fall Apart. The title of my poem is The Three Blind Mice. The title of my poem is, you quote it, you use the quotation mark, The Three Blind Mice. Now it's activity time. Today we were able to identify three other punctuation marks. Capital letters or capitalizations, quotation marks, and the colon. Did you enjoy the lesson? You understood the lesson perfectly. Then, let's check. And let's see how attentive you have been in the course of the lesson. Punctuate the following sentences using colon, quotation marks, and capitalization where necessary. In the next 60 seconds, that is one full minute, write the sentences and punctuate them correctly. Your time starts now. Eyes on me. By now you should have finished writing these sentences and putting the punctuation marks correctly where necessary or where appropriate. So let's have the correction together. Of course we know that every sentence must begin with a capital letter. So let's go on from there. So Antiphony got five out of five. What about you? So you're smart. You're brilliant. You are awesome totally. And I'm proud of you. I give you this chair. Thank you. Now for your assignment. Still on punctuations. You are to punctuate the following sentences using colon, punctuation marks, or capitalization where necessary. In the next 30 seconds, please capture this assignment and I'll be right back to sign up. Well done, children.
Well done. Now, you should have finished copying your assignment. Make sure you do your assignment. And don't forget to indicate your name, your school, your class, and your local government education authority when you are submitting to that dedicated phone number. This is the only way by which you can be identified and rewarded accordingly. And on that note, I say, that's it for today. We have come to the end of another interesting English studies lesson. Yesterday, we looked at punctuations. Yes. So, I had fun teaching you, and I know you enjoyed learning the, the colon, the quotation marks, and capitalization. On that note, I want to hand you over to the mathematician on Kwagbaje for an equally interesting mathematics lesson. Before I go, I want to tell you again, Auntie Fumi is always proud of you. Bye. Hello, children. You are welcome to this segment of the program, The Classroom in Your Home. It is mathematics time, and that means it is time to have some fun. I am Uncle Agbaje. Today in mathematics, for now we are done with our work on angles, and we'll be moving on to an entirely new concept. We will be talking about polygons. Have you heard about polygons before? Perhaps you have, perhaps you have not. But by the end of the lesson, you should be able to have an idea of what polygons are and where you can find them in your backyard. Before we go into today's topic, let's quickly look over the correction to the previous homework. You were asked to find the missing angles in this triangle, so I'm just going to rush through it for you. These are the answers that you see, so if you have gotten any one of them right, just run through it. Okay, so um, now to find these angles uh, is very easy. We know that this is 60, 68. We can get this angle by using the exterior angle because obviously this form a straight line with this so we can use the idea that angles on the straight line is 180 degrees to get this angle so 180 degrees minus 122 taking one from here we're left with 7 10 minus 2 is 8 7 minus 2 is 5 and so this angle here is 58 degrees now if this is 68 and this is 58 then we can add them together and subtract both of them from 180 because the three angles inside a triangle must add up to 180 degrees. So 68 plus 58 will give us 126 degrees. I'm sure you must have gotten that. Now, if we remove 126 degrees from 180 degrees, then we can have, taking one here and adding it here, 10 minus 6 is 4, 7 minus 2 is 5, and so that means this angle is 54 degrees. So x is 54 degrees and y is uh, 58 degrees. Let's see if we are correct. So yes, x is 54 degrees and y is 58 degrees. And if you got all these answers right, then I have to celebrate you with a chair. Now let's move on to today's work. Now, what are the learning objectives? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to recognize different types of polygons. You should be able to name polygons up to eight sides. And finally, you should be able to state the properties or the features of polygons. You should be able to describe them. But what are polygons? Don't worry, my friend, there are things that you are familiar with. Polygons are just flat shapes or plain shapes that have straight sides and these straight sides are connected. They close up to join each other, form a closed shape. Whichever way you draw it, my friend, just draw straight sides and close it up. You have a polygon. The polygon's name will now depend on how many lines you were able to connect. So perhaps you want to take 10 seconds in your notebook to draw lines and connect them. Draw as many as, how many lines, how many straight lines can you connect together and form a closed shape? Then when you do that, then you have a, a polygon but what will be the name of that your polygon my friend I trust that you are done connecting your polygons now okay so 
uh, these some of them are here on the board so what will be the name of your polygon well perhaps by the end of the lesson you should be able to give a name to that polygon that you have drawn my friend so the important thing to note is that polygons are flat you can draw them on a sheet of paper or you can cut them out of a paper so as you draw them you can use the scissors to trace the polygon out it is not a three-dimensional shape that you have to hold with both ends or that has height so it's a flat shape and then it has straight sides so it does not have any curve so a circle will not be a polygon and finally it must be fully closed polygons are closed shape not open shapes and of course the sides must be straight as i've said and they must they can have any number of sides they can have 20 30 sides you can have three sides but they cannot have two sides because you cannot close two lines you would only have an angle so you need a minimum of how many lines as you must have discovered you will need a minimum of three lines to form a closed shape okay so this is a polygon because all the sides are straight and the lines are connected and they are closed but this is not a polygon because even though it is closed it has a curve and this is not a polygon because even though the lines are straight it is not closed so we begin to have an idea of what polygons are and what polygons are not they must be closed they must have straight sides so a circle once again my friend is not a polygon so polygons with three sides are called of course, you know that all shapes with three sides are called triangles, but you can also call them trilaterals. We call them triangles. Triangle is formed from the word three and angle. Triangle. So, and that is because that in every is because in every triangle there are three angles. So, as you can see, this is one angle. This is one angle. This is another angle. So, any triangle that you have will have three angles all of them will have three angles it's not possible for a triangle to have two angles or four or more than that it's gonna have just three that's why we call them three triangles or you can call them trilaterals okay and so these are the different types of triangles that we have we talked about the properties of some of them in the previous lessons we'll still come across triangles in our subsequent lessons but for now we have equilateral triangles isosceles triangles scaling triangles right angle triangles whichever way you draw them your triangle my friend will have a name so these are some of the common ones uh, let's move on a regular polygon is a polygon in which all the sides are equal all the sides of a regular polygon so imagine drawing four lines of equal length and then finding a way to close it together then you have a regular polygon it could be a regular triangle it could be a regular quadrilateral it could be a regular five-sided shape and that means that all the sides are equal when we talk about being regular in a, tri a, in a quadrilateral we are talking about or in a plane shape rather we're talking about plane shapes with the same length of side the sides have the same length okay so this will not be a regular plane shape so if i draw this i draw this this will not be a regular plane shape because obviously this line or this side is longer than this side so this is not regular an irregular polygon is a polygon with sides that are of different lengths uh, on sizes although they still must be straight and they must be joined so for them to be called a polygon in the first place so let's look at some regular and irregular polygons this is a triangle it has three sides this is the regular one all the sides are equal this is another triangle but the sides are not equal so it's not regular this is a quadrilateral with equal sides so this is the regular and this is not regular and this is a five-sided plane shape we call this pentagon we'll still talk about it later this is another pentagon but the sides are not equal now let's look at the properties of these polygons what do we know about them we will be studying the properties of the polygon under this heading the number of sides that they have the lines of symmetry that they have and that is a line that divides them into two equal parts and then the number of triangles that we can form from each of these polygons so let's say the first one we're looking at is the one that has three sides so these are the possibilities you draw a polygon 
the, the simplest, uh, the smallest number of lines you can use is one that uses three lines, and that is this one. And so this one has three sides, and the name of that polygon is a triangle. A triangle is also an example of a polygon, my friend. So the lines of symmetry here for a, po a regular polygon, by the way, all the, all the sides are equal. For regular polygons, it has a, reg a regular triangle has three lines of symmetry. And that means you can divide it equally along this line or along this line or along this line. Okay. But for a triangle that is not regular, you will not have three lines of symmetry. We'll talk about that in detail in subsequent lessons. It has three lines of symmetry. Then this one has four sides and all the four sides are equal. That's why we're talking about regular polygons. So four sides, it is called a square and the lines of symmetry are four. You can divide it equally along this line, along this line, along this line, along this line. Of course, that is a regular polygon that has four sides, but we'll call them, the you know, lines of symmetry are four, okay? Now, the next one is the one that has five sides and all the five sides are equal. So we call this one a pentagon. We call this a pentagon. Say pentagon, pentagon, pentagon. Penta means five, okay? So pentagon is a plane shape that has five equal sides. And let's see how many lines of symmetry it has. You can divide it along each of the angle. And so if there are five angles, there will be five sides. Uh, if there are five sides, there will be five lines of symmetry as well. So I am seeing a pattern here. This has three sides and this has three lines of symmetry. This has four sides and this has four lines of symmetry. This has five sides and this has five sides of symmetry. So I'm guessing that the next one that has six will have six lines of symmetry. Now let's see. This is a six-sided regular polygon. We call it an hexagon. Hexagon for six-sided. You can remember that by remembering that six and X both have X. Six and X both have X. Six for hexagon, X for hexagon. Okay, so what how many lines of symmetry? We guess it will be six. Let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five. And then finally six. Let's count that again. So everything. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one is still this one. So there are six lines of symmetry, as you can see. So it's as simple as that. Then we have the one with seven sides. And that one, we call that an heptagon. Hexagon. Hepta means seven. So the seven-sided plane shape is called heptagon. But for the regular one that has all sides equal, how many lines of symmetry? Your guess is as good as mine. It will have seven sides. It, that means we can divide it, fold it equally along seven lines. And these are the seven lines. Let's start counting from here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We already counted this one. So that's seven lines of symmetry. So, and of course, the next one will be the eight-sided one, which we call the octagon octagon that has eight sides it's called octagon and of course it will have eight lines of symmetry just remember that after september you have october so after heptagon you will have octagon okay and octagon has eight lines of symmetry and that means that you can fold it equally along eight lines starting from here let's count one two three four five six seven eight okay Okay, now we're going to be reconsidering these plane shapes based on the number of triangles that we can form within them. Okay, so we'll start with the first one. We'll join all the corners and see how many triangles we can form without crossing any lines. So if we join all the corners of this one, we can only form one triangle. Whichever way you try to draw it, only one triangle can be formed from here by joining the corners only. But for the square, if we join corners, we can form two triangles. If we try to join here, we'll be crossing the line. So we don't want to cross line. We just want to join angles in such a way that 
the lines will not cross each other. So we can form two triangles, and that means inside a square you have two triangles. Inside a pentagon, let's say a pentagon, we can join without crossing lines. We can join like this and like this, and then we have one triangle, two triangle, three triangles. So three triangles. Are you seeing the pattern that I'm seeing? Triangle has one triangle, a, quadra a quadrilateral has two triangles, a pentagon has three triangles, the next one obviously will have four, but let's see what that looks like. This is an, uh, an hexagon, so let's see, without crossing lines, joining angle to angle, we have, go this way, and we have one triangle, two triangles, three triangles, four triangles as we predicted, so an hexagon has four triangles. How many do you think an heptagon will have? Did you say five? Let's just confirm that. This is an heptagon. By joining without crossing lines, we have one triangle, two triangles, three triangles, four triangles, five triangles. Your guess is as good as mine. And for the last one, an octagon will have six triangles. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So the pattern is quite clear. From triangles with three sides, you have one. With four sides, you have two triangles. With five sides, you have three. With six sides, you have four. With seven sides, you have five. And we're just subtracting two. With eight sides, you have six. With nine sides, how many do you think we're going to have? With a 20-sided polygon, how many triangles do you think will be there? With 20-sided, I'm thinking it should be 18. Okay, so what is the summary of all that we have discussed today? If a polygon has a certain number of sides, then the lines of symmetry will also be the same. So if it has n lines of symmetry, it has n sides. If it has 20 lines of symmetry, then it has 20 sides. If it has 10 sides, then it will have 10 lines of symmetry. And then if it has a certain number of sides, the number of triangles inside will be gotten by subtracting two from the number of sides. So if it has six sides, it will have four triangles inside it. That is the summary. So now it's your turn to do this, to test whether you have been able to learn one or two things from all that we have discussed today. A polygon with four sides is called dash. A pentagon has dash side and is composed of how many triangles? A pentagon. Don't copy the questions, just study it and write down your answer. You have 30 seconds for this. Begin. All right, then I believe that you are done. Let's run three together. How many did you get? Six all over six, four all over six, five all over six. If you got four and above, then I will celebrate you with another chair. Now, it is time for your homework. Copy this down in 20 seconds, but do not go away because remember that we have that segment which we introduced last week, the Magic Tuesday segment. Uncle Agbaje will be right back. Hello children, you're welcome to this segment of the Mathematics class. It's Magic Tuesday where I show you tips and tricks to make mathematics easier for you, my friend. Are you ready for today's trick? Today, we will learn how to multiply even numbers by 5, no matter how large they are. We'll would simply be halving them. Let's see what this is all about. We look at the first example. This example says 5 times 24 and somebody looks like this guy it says 5 times 24 that's too large well it's not large my friend all you have to do is to take half of 24 and that half of 24 is 12 so you write 12 but that's not the answer you have to complete that with 0 and that is 120 it's as simple as that all you have to do to multiply 24 by 5 is to take half of it and then add 0 and the answer is 120. Let's look at another example. This one says 
5 times 68. I ask this man and he's saying, oh, 5 times 68, I can't do it. But you can, my friend. All you have to do is take half of 68 and that is 34. Put 34 there and then you complete it with what? You complete with 0 and the answer is 340. And this works for only even numbers. Do not try this with odd numbers, only numbers that are divisible by 2. Let's look at the final example. This one says multiply 5 by 4444 and this one is scared of that number. But you shouldn't be scared, my friend. All you have to do is take half of that. Half of 4,444 is 2222. Two, two, two. Then write that down and never complete, never forget to complete it with a zero. And you get 22,220. It's as simple as that. To multiply any even number by five, just take half of it and then add zero. And that is all there is to read. Well, that's it for the magic segment for today, my friend. It's time for me to hand you over to Uncle Coco for the General Studies lesson. Till I come your way in the next mathematics class, remain wonderful mathematicians. Bye-bye now. Hello, pupils. You are welcome to General Studies class. I am Uncle Popo. Uncle Popo is here. Good. Your response is, I am also here. We are here together. Then you say 100% attention. Excellent. In today's lesson, I want you to give me your 100% attention. Our subject for today is social studies. Today, we move on, still on drug. And our topic for today is sources of drug supply. Sources of drug supply is the topic. The learning objectives. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to list registered and unregistered sources of drug supply and you should be able to identify symptoms of drug abuse lastly you should be able to identify ways to prevent drug abuse so that's all what we have for today and um, let's look at the registered sources of drug supply we have some examples when talking about registered sources of drug supply we are talking about the um, industry um, or company that is allowed by law to sell or produce drugs. Now let's look at the registered sources of drug supply. We talk about pharmaceutical industries. That's a registered place and it's allowed, it's a legal place to buy drugs. Likewise, hospitals, that's another um, place where people can buy drugs and it's Doctors and nurses can prescribe drugs for you. You can't just think you have headache and you go to somebody close by to buy a medicine there to use. So that is wrong. So these ones are the legal place, places to buy drugs. Let's look at unregistered sources of drug supply. Here we are talking about the places not allowed by law that are illegal to buy drugs from. Um, that we still, people buy drugs from those places, but it is illegal and it is not allowed by law. Let's look at them. We have the traditional medicine establishment, and another one is herb sellers. You can see the picture here. This is very common. You see them in different places where they sell different kinds of drugs. So, likewise, supermarkets and provision sellers, we have some supermarkets now where they also sell drugs. So I think it's not authorized by law. It is illegal to buy drugs from those places. So moving on now to symptoms of abuse of drugs. What are the symptoms of drugs, are drugs? Symptoms, or, uh, symptoms of abuse of drugs, let's talk about the first one, cocaine or heroin. What are the symptoms when you see somebody taking this drug what are likely things you see that will be affecting uh, the physical appearance of the person? The first one is tiny pupil. Here, when we are saying tiny pupil, we are not referring to um, a learner or a child. That's not what we mean by tiny pupil. The pupil here we are talking about is the dark center of your iris. So somebody taking cocaine or heroin, like you are saying in the picture, who one of the 
uh, features is tiny pupil, you will see the pupil very tiny. That when you see such person, you know that, wow, this person is on drug because it will really show the physical appearance will tell. Abnormal or excessive happiness. That's another symptom, abnormal or excessive happiness. Such a person will be happy, abnormally, or um, excessive happiness that you will see that, uh, what have we just said that this person is laughing this way? Uh, the, the behavior will be clearly seen by people that this person is on drugs. Now let's look at uh, symptoms of abuse of drugs on sedative drugs or alcohol users. Now let's look at the symptoms of these. The first one, drunken behavior without smell of drink. That's sedative drugs. Those they use drugs like um, that we discussed in our last le lesson, like codeine, tramadol, repnol. When um, a person takes that kind of drug, it won't smell for, from the person. Unlike alcohol, that when one takes it, you see that the body will start, you, you perceive the smell of that alcoholic drink from on the person. But sedative drug, you won't perceive the smell. But the behavior will change. Will, the person will start behaving abnormally. I will show you that kind of behavior. Let's look at drunken behavior with smell of drink of alcohol. That's another one. When somebody takes an alcoholic drink, the, the, the behavior too will change. I know you'll have words on movies where you see a drunkard the way they behave. Uh, maybe on the streets or around you, you'll have seen somebody drunk and the kind of and the way such person behaves. Now, let's look at uh, that kind of behavior. Just look at me. A drunken behavior with smell of alcohol or a drunken behavior without smell of drink, the kind of behavior they will put on. Just watch this. Like a drunkard, they will behave like this. Uh, hello. Uh, how much is the thing that I've just bought? <coughs> 14 era. Okay. How much is this? You said to, to a no, you do think you can shoot me? This is 20 naira. How much is this one too? No, no, it's 20 naira. I bought something 14 naira from you. This is your 14 naira. I don't allow cheating. You can't cheat me. Take your 14 naira. So you can see that kind of behavior that the person was not right in what is. They were even telling the person the correct amount of money is owed. They say no. Because that's kind of behavior you see them, they start misbehaving and they will not um, talk sensibly in the society. That's um, the symptoms of abuse of drugs, sedative drugs and alcohol users. Tremors or convulsion when not on the drug, I've talked about that. Now, let's look at the primary sources of help to those with drug abuse problems. People having problems of drug abuse uh, let's look at the way they could be helped in the society. It is the duty of everyone to ensure that victims of drug abuse are, are counseled. Such a person, you can counsel the person, you try to let the person know the effect or the danger in taking those hard drugs. Then to be counseled, some will have gotten worse to the extent that they will need treatment. So they should be treated and helped to their normal lives. We have people that are on drugs before that drug addicts, but later they changed and sat, and they started living normal life. So the duty of everyone is your duty, it's my duty, it's the duty of people around to counsel the person. And if treatment, if the person needs treatment, it should be treated to come back to normal life. And next one is the um, critical cases of drug abuse are normally treated in psychiatric hospitals or rehabilitation centers where they undergo series of treatment, counseling, and rehabilitation. Some will have been addicted to the extent that they would need to be uh, treated at psychiatric hospital because the drugs, the hard drugs, will have affected the brains, and um, such a person cannot live, live normal life until he or she is taken to. I mention he or she because it's not only when talking about. Drugs is not only men or males that are into it. We also have females or women in that regard. So they will be taken to psychiatric hospitals so that the brains will be treated and they will start living a normal life. Or rehabilitation centers, they will go there too for treatment. So that's another um, primary source of help. That means 
the treatment at psychiatric or rehabilitation center. Next one is um, the community also has a duty to help the victims. Uh, when we talk about the communities, we are talking about the religious institutions like the churches and mosques should teach good behavior to people in the church and the, the churches and the mosques. Um, the teaching should also reflect in the way, in the behavior, in the normal way of behaving in the society. And it, at least through that, they will learn what should be taken and what should not be taken what should be used and what should not be used and people will start living their normal life. So let's look at the ways to prevent drug abuse. Now what are the ways to prevent, what are the ways we can avoid taking our drugs? So those are the ways we want to look at now. We have looked at the symptoms but the, uh, like uh, the saying goes that prevention is better than cure. That means it's better to prevent taking um, a drug than curing. So let's look at the ways to prevent drug abuse. The first one is developing positive health behavior and life-saving skills. Developing positive health behavior and life-saving skills. That means you should not be involved in um, behavior that can ruin your life, like drinking alcohol, drink taking our drugs or some people just say they want to experience how cigarette tastes and through that they become a person that cannot do without taking cigarettes. So you should do away with such behaviors. Next one is uh, performing reg regular exercises is a way to help your body. Some are into it because they think they could not perform or perform their daily activities without taking the hard drugs. But when you are performing regular exercises, your body will function effectively and you will not need to use any um, drugs to act normally. Next one is uh, involving yourself in constructive relationship with others. You should know the kind of people you move with. You should know the kind of gathering they will see you. You should know the kind of friends you move with and that will help your behavior. Now, Having discussed all these, we have a um, governmental organization concerned with drug law and enforcement in Nigeria. That, that's why in use, the use of our drugs, we have agency that is responsible to prevent or to arrest people that are into our drugs. Then who can tell me uh, the agency I'm referring to? Do you know? Okay, now let's look at it. That is NDLE. A N D L E A meaning National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Say that National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Good, that's N D L E A. It's, it's an agency, is a federal agency charged with eliminating the growing, processing, manufacturing, selling exporting and trafficking of our drugs in Nigeria. That's their duty. The first one, they are charged with what? Eliminating the growing because we have some grow those, um, some um, plants and they are used for those our drugs. So they are in charge. They are charged with eliminating the growing, processing, manufacturing, selling, exporting, and trafficking of our drugs in Nigeria. So that is NDLEA. You can <clears throat> look at this. So this is the kind of uniform they put on. So when you see them, don't think that it's a new um, police force established uh, in Nigeria or formed in Nigeria. That is a NDLEA. Evaluation time. I want to hear activity time. Evaluation time. Good. I want to see if you had given your 100% attention in today's lesson. Three questions. Number one, list three unregistered sources of drug supply. Number two, state two ways to prevent drug abuse. Number three, what is the full meaning of NDLEA? You have 30 seconds to attempt this.
Uncle Popo is here. Good. Let's mark together because we are here together. Number one, list three unregistered sources of drug supply. Traditional medicine establishment, I told you some were not authorized by law. App sellers, roadside hawkers, and some examples we treated in today's lesson are also correct. <clears throat> Say two ways to prevent drug abuse, performing regular exercise, avoidance of harmful drugs, developing, developing positive health behavior, uh, ways to prevent drug abuse, and those ones we have all treated in today's lesson too. What is the full meaning of NDLEA? National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Good. Brilliant one. Your response is perfect one. Good. Three out of three. Let me see your end. Two out of three. Good. And those of you that have attempted this, I also celebrate you. We have come to the end of today's lesson. Until next time, next lesson, Uncle Popo says, keep on studying. Bye. My wonderful pupils, we have come to the end of another exciting edition of the classroom in your home. An exciting one indeed it has been for us. We hope that you enjoyed our lessons today in mathematics, English studies, and of course, general studies. Remember that practice, 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 that is the mother of perfection. And you can be perfect in all the way of teaching by simply checking out our online collection of online tests. You can access these tests using the link bit.ly for slash last web t e s t s. Remember, the link again is bit.ly for slash last web tests. These online assessments are our way of knowing how well you are performing so that we can help you to improve on your performance. Yes. Taking the online um, test or the online assessment is based on if you have access to either your daddies, your mommies, your uncles, or your aunties, Android or smartphones. If not, there's no problem. Just send your comments, your questions, and assignment to 081-50-86-5663. Just send your questions, your comments, and your assignments to that number. SMS and WhatsApp messages only. Please do not call that number. Do not call that number. And when you are submitting your assignment, Make sure you indicate, it is compulsory that you indicate your name, your school, your class, and your local government education authority. That is the only way by which you can be identified and appraised accordingly. Good. All the lessons taught today and the previous ones are on Lagos Web YouTube channel for you to watch over and over again at your own preferred time. All what you need to do is to subscribe to Lagos Web YouTube channel to get notification when new videos are uploaded. The classroom in your home could be watched live, live on, on Facebook. Facebook through the page showing on the screen, the same time airing on television. Okay. Until our next edition when we shall meet again on the classroom in your home, I want to say, make sure you do your homework. Wash your hands regularly. Keep studying hard, but above all, stay, stay safe. safe. Because at last, we, we leave no child behind. behind.